Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to take an up close and personal in depth look with the recently refreshed 2015 Dodge Durango RT. Big shout out to AutoNation for providing the vehicles featured in today's video. For more information on their dealerships and current inventory, please feel free to check out their website provided in the description box below. As always, guys, this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the Durango RT. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data, take it on a quick test drive, and we'll show you all the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. As you can see, remote start does come standard. Both examples featured here are finished in brilliant black crystal pearl coat and come paired with the upgraded Napa leather interior package. The RT exclusive interior elements include red color accent stitching across the doors, seats, and RT logos stitched in the backrest. A new option for 2015 is a red Napa interior package for even more of a dynamic look. Along with that smart key system, the Durango RT also features push button ignition. So to start, all you have to do, make sure the key fob is within the interior of the vehicle, put your foot on the brake, wait for everything to illuminate, and then hit the button to go. The RT and other Durangos that feature the Hemi V8 use rack and pinion steering with hydraulic power assistance versus the V6's electro-hydraulic setup. It's routed through an all-new three-spoke steering wheel introduced for the 2014 refresh that blends a higher quality design with softer leather, chrome detailing, and silver trim across the spokes. The multifunction controls are within easy reach and house the available adaptive cruise system. We'll discuss handling and ride quality a little later in the video. Providing a big boost in performance and overall economy is an all-new ZF-sourced 8-speed automatic transmission, also introduced last year, which replaces the antiquated 5-speed auto. It includes steering wheel mounted aluminum panel shifters standard on all models that add a lot of fun to the mix. With a wider ratio spread and taller gearing, fuel economy is said to improve by up to 9%. Shifts occur quicker and much smoother than before, making the drive feel much more refined and up-to-date. It's routed through a new rotary gear selector in the center console. Love it or hate it, it's worlds better than the previous gated shifter. While I somewhat prefer the 2015 Charger shifter design for those who remember, this is quite convenient and doesn't take up any room in the center console, making it easier to access the cup holders. All-wheel drive is available and, when equipped, comes with a two-speed electronically shifted transfer case with variable torque transfer. It can be set to neutral for a flat towing or replaced in all-wheel drive lock for greater traction at low speeds. As you've probably noticed from other of my recent videos, digital instrument clusters are starting to become more commonplace this day and age. And same goes for the Durango. One of my favorite features for the 2014 refresh was this new 7-inch thin film transistor liquid crystal display. You have your analog tachometer to the left, vehicle temperature and fuel off to the right, but you have a digitalized analog speedometer front and center that houses a very, very detailed driver information system. As you saw a second ago, the left hand side of the steering wheel houses four arrow keys and an OK button in the middle. Those are what you use to go between the different menus and submenus. 
It's highly customizable and informative, so you always know what's going on with the vehicle, and you can custom tailor different parameters to suit your individual needs. And so, we're going to flip on the automatic bi-xenon LED accented headlamps, fog lamps, and the hazards. Both front windows are fully automatic, and also features laminated glass for the front windows for better safety and noise isolation. So, let's go and check out the exterior. The interior of the vehicle will also chime, letting you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. Last year, the current generation Durango received its first refresh since 2011, bringing with it updated styling and improved technology, a lot of which takes inspiration from the Charger. The differences, while subtle, are very effective given in a more upscale and menacing look than before, especially for the RT. Up front, you'll find a slimmer split crosshair grille along with a larger lower grille that both incorporate a revised mesh pattern. Updated projector beam LED accented by Xenon headlamps with auto leveling technology complement new projector fog lamps. A raised bumper and sculpted lower fascia help benefit aerodynamics and even add more aggression. The hood carries over unmodified and still looks fantastic. Its twin power domes meet in the center, creating a dip down element that extends back towards the cowl. The side profile also continues largely unchanged. It features powerful and muscular Coke bottle styling, again inspired from the Charger, flush side glass, and inlaid doors. I love the defining body crease across the lower doors and flared wheel arches. Combine this with a smooth, continuous line that connects the front and rear lighting elements, along with more subdued detailing around the rear windows and D-pillars, and you have a vehicle that's designed to look relatively exciting from just about every angle. Out back, the most dramatic new elements include a new racetrack LED tail lamp design and revised hatch release on the tailgate. The soft LED light pattern incorporates 192 LEDs within a seamless ribbon of light, similar in concept to the 2015 Charger we looked at earlier this year. For added detail, the Dodge script is inscripted within the center portion. The rear fascia has also been re-sculpted to fully integrate the trailer hitch for a cleaner, more premium look. Stepping up to the V8 adds 3.5 inch polished dual exhaust tips compared to a single 3 inch tip on V6 models. Currently, the Durango lineup consists of the SXT, SXT Plus, Limited, RT, and Citadel. The RT starts at $39,995 and benefits from a surprising amount of changes to make it the most dynamic and entertaining Durango you can buy. This is something I've been really looking forward to experiencing for a while now. As a proud owner of a 2012 Charger RT Max, the Durango has always seemed like an intriguing option if I ever needed more space. While high-performance SUVs are not uncommon this day and age, the Durango RT seems like a sensible choice when compared to other more expensive vehicles in the class. It's extremely roomy and displays impressive road manners for its size. For me, I've always thought of the Durango RT as like the SUV equivalent to the Charger RT. It blends many similar styling cues with a signature muscle car feel, a great compromise for the enthusiast who needs the added practicality that only an SUV can offer. If a more subdued luxury themed alternative is more your speed, the Citadel is available for just a thousand more. The RT comes with the Hemi V8, which we'll discuss more in a bit and can be had in both rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. It sits 20 millimeters or about 0.8 inches lower than other Durangos and features 15% stiffer springs at each corner. The front shocks have twice the damping force while the rear increases by 20%. Engineers dialed in a half degree of negative camber for each wheel, helping it keep more contact with the pavement and corners, along with modifying the steering to be more responsive relative to the various changes. Along with the mechanical updates, the RT also features dark tinted headlamp bezels, along with body colored front and rear lower fascias, wheel wells, grille, and sill moldings, not to mention a body colored rear spoiler that incorporates a third brake light. The RT is available with three different wheel styles. These polished and painted alloys are a $695 option, while the dark gray set you'll see in a bit comes standard. Unique styled gloss black wheels are available with the black top package. All the wheel sets measure 20 by 8 inches and are wrapped in 26560 Goodyear Forterra all-season tires, helping the RT hold around 0.8 g of lateral acceleration. Bringing the SUV to a stop from 60 miles an hour is said to take a little over 115 feet thanks to a four-wheel internally ventilated braking system. Consisting of 13.8 inch rotors in front and 13 inch rotors in the rear, clamped by twin piston and single piston calipers respectively. Underneath, the Durango features an independent double wishbone front suspension and a multi-link rear suspension with four-wheel twin-tube coilover shock absorbers and a front stabilizer bar. With the help of isolated front and rear cradles, the Durango RT rides a lot better than I initially thought it would. 
When you consider the 20 inch wheels and stiffer suspension, you might expect it to be a little bit rough, and it probably is a little bit rougher compared to a standard Durango or a Citadel, but since I hadn't driven one of the new Durangos prior, it really wasn't the case for me. My initial impression was that it was definitely comparable to a Charger, perhaps even a bit softer. It's stiff enough that it communicates road surface imperfections, but soft enough to be comfortable as a family traveler. Of course, you're still going to feel its curb weight, just simple physics, but for the everyday driver, the RT holds its own quite well through the corners, largely thanks to a nearly perfect weight distribution. For an SUV of this price and size, it will offer a lot of fun and enjoyment without much compromise. The suspension incorporates some aluminum for reduced unsprung weight and, in the RT's case, further tuning for greater agility and handling over the rest of the lineup. Equipped with the V8, the Durango is able to tow up to 7,400 pounds. Overall length is 201.2 inches with a width of 75.8 inches and a height of 72.7 inches, riding on a 119.8 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight, as you see here, is around 5,331 pounds. The Durango RT comes standard with the 5.7 liter Hemi V8, which is otherwise optional in the Limited and Citadel. The 90 degree engine is constructed using a deep skirt cast iron block with cross bolted main bearing caps. The heads are aluminum and incorporate hemispherical combustion chambers. It utilizes variable valve timing with the traditional pushrod operated valves, two per cylinder, in addition to sequential multiport fuel injection. Compression ratio is rated at 10.5 to 1 with a limited maximum engine speed of 5,800 RPM. It develops 360 horsepower at 5,150 RPM and 390 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM. That's good for a 0 to 60 time around 6.4 seconds and a top speed governed to 119 miles per hour. Despite the fuel economy penalty compared with the Pentastar V6 and other Durango trims, I love the Hemi engine. The RT takes entertainment to a whole new level with its aggressive sound and exhaust system. Believe it or not, it's quite a bit louder than a stock Charger RT, way louder than mine. It's deep and throaty and emits little blips on upshifts, never letting you forget the performance vibe. I almost secretly wish you could just put the Durango RT exhaust on the Charger, it would probably sound amazing. As far as fuel economy, mid-grade 89 octane is recommended for maximum performance, but 87 octane is acceptable. A new eco mode introduced for 2014 is activated by default when you start the engine and can be turned off by a button beneath the climate control. It basically works to optimize the transmission's shift schedule and throttle sensitivity to help maximize fuel economy. The Hemi cylinder deactivation system, where the engine is allowed to run on four cylinders while cruising, also engages more often while in eco. Total tank capacity is 24.6 gallons. EPA estimates range between 14 miles to a gallon in the city and 22 on the highway, averaging around 16 miles to a gallon. Along with a refreshed exterior, the interior also received a number of tasteful updates, for the most part limited to technology and equipment changes, along with a new option of red Nappa leather seats for 2015. The general styling and placements of controls is pretty much identical to the 2011 through 2013 models. Overall build quality and materials is pretty good considering the price point and what you get. It's very much like the Charger when it comes to the level of soft touch surfaces, including quite a bit across the upper door panels, dash, and areas of the center console. All of your power accessories, including your windows, locks, mirrors, and two-person memory are located on the door panel. You have a little bit of chrome detailing around the handle, silver trim, and a lot of storage down in the bottom panel. The Durango has a ton of interior space and comes standard with three rows of seats for greater passenger hauling ability. I didn't talk about this earlier in the video, but the Durango's platform is actually based on the Mercedes GL class. I'm not sure how closely, but I know that it is related. For those who remember the AMG version we checked out a while back, it too had a very roomy interior and a very accommodating third row seat, so we'll talk about the back seat a little bit more in depth later in the video so you can really see what it's all about. The seats are nice and comfortable, the leather is soft, and I love the unique RT red accent stitching. The headrests and seatbelts are adjustable. There's not a lot of lateral support, but there's some notable definition across either side. Both the driver and passenger seat are fully powered and incorporate four-way power lumbar. You have aluminum door sill entry guards, a driver's side knee airbag, and a power tilt telescoping heated steering wheel. I love all the chrome touches and the padded material across the dash, but I do wish it incorporated more genuine aluminum trim like you would find in the Charger, especially for the price point. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds.
we'll go ahead and shut her up. Good solid doors. The Durango RT comes standard with a premium 9-speaker 506-watt Alpine audio system. It's now routed through Chrysler Group's excellent Uconnect infotainment system. It measures 8.4 inches and incorporates everything from navigation to hands-free Bluetooth telephone, media, entertainment, and climate controls. For the Durango's application, and I'm not sure if this is the same way for all of them or it's just the RT, but this particular background is red and you can see the Durango in the background, which is pretty cool. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of the Uconnect system. It's extremely easy to use. All the main system functions are located at the very bottom of the screen. Very clean, very uncluttered, and it packs a ton of different features. You have your side curtain airbags, padded visors up top with illuminated vanity mirrors, not to mention an auto dimming rear view mirror with 911 roadside assistance. Up in the top stack, you have a padded sunglass container, three position garage home link controls for the fully automatic sunroof, a wind deflector also automatically pops up. You also have your hands-free Bluetooth microphone, interior illumination, and LED ring lamps, not to mention the controls to the power rear liftgate. This example also features a tri-zone climate control system, so you have fully independent automatic adjustment for the front two occupants, temperature on either side here, fan speed, one-touch automatic, front and rear defrost, AC and recycling, and you have independent climate controls for the rear passengers, so everybody has a little bit of added customizability. Continuing down the center console, you have a 12-volt power outlet to the left, pretty good sized storage tray, and your media inputs off to the right, SD card, USB, and auxiliary. Across the console, in addition to the plentiful amounts of chrome bright work, you have two cup holders here, another small tray, and the controls for the all-wheel drive system, whether it's in automatic mode or selecting low range. In the rear, there's a leather padded center console with double accent red stitching, and it's a two-tier design, so you have a small storage tray up top and a cargo well down below that also incorporates another 12-volt power outlet. As far as the steering wheel, on the right-hand side you have your cruise control and, if equipped, all of your adaptive cruise functions will be located here. The left-hand side, hands-free voice commands, telephone controls, and your driver information controls for the TFT display in the instrument cluster. Your radio controls, as in typical Chrysler Group fashion, are located on either side of the um, upper spokes on the back side. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. And check out the rear seat. Like you would expect out of a vehicle of this size, the Durango is an absolute cinch to climb into the back of. I mean, it's a nice wide opening, tall roof height. The ride height isn't too high, so you can just slide on in for any average individual. Or if you need a little bit of extra assistance, there's an all-weather plaque down below here. It's just a strip of plastic that kind of extends out into the cabin. It has a little bit of grippy material on it, so you have a little bit more of a foothold if you need to hoist yourself on up. Of course, that's further aided by these grip handles up here. So you can just step on up and climb in, or just hop on in. Either way, very easy. As far as overall interior space, I'm definitely not hurting for any at all. I'm five foot ten or so, and I probably have, I'd say, five to six inches of headspace, roughly, and maybe about four and a half, five inches of leg space. And the other thing that you'll notice is the back seats are really comfortable. They don't hug you quite as much as the front, of course, this being a bench seat compared to bucket seats. There's not a whole lot of lateral support across the sides, but there's also a nice amount of padding. Now, overall seat feel, they're a little on the firmer side, but something I appreciate, especially where it counts, there's a lot of lower back support here, a lot of give in the lower cushion, and overall it, it, it fits your body quite well for a big bench seat. As you can see here, the Durango is also available with captain's seating for the middle row passengers. They're very comfortable as well. I mean, I like the quality of the leather. There's good bolstering up top and down below, and there's plenty of padding. I mean, these seats more so mimic the front than the traditional bench seat across the middle. I also like the fact that each of these seats have their own individual armrests. So really, you can just kind of kick back and relax like a big cushy armchair. <laughs> 
Another nice thing about ordering the captain's chairs is the added flexibility of getting into the back seat. Instead of having to fold and tumble the seats every single time, you could pretty much just hop on in and climb through the middle here. There's a little bit of all-weather um, plating down below here with the Dodge logo. It's pretty neat. Um, small storage tray, two cup holders. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Napa leather back here is just absolutely phenomenal. It's so soft and supple feeling. It looks nice to the eyes, especially with the detailing and the color accent stitching, which also continues back here. And you have standard two-stage heated seats for the RT. It's a very luxurious environment. Fold down the armrest, locks in place. It's also wrapped in the leather and there's two cup holders. If you desire to sit a third person here, of course, there's a seat belt and an adjustable headrest in the middle. Down below you have two adjustable air registers, a 150 watt AC household outlet, as well as two USB ports for charging of like your phones, uh, iPods, things of that nature. And of course you have side curtain airbags in the back, coat hooks up top, reading lamps and illumination for both the second and third row passengers, vents mounted up in the headliner for this row and the rear so everyone's kept nice and ventilated, and the controls up here for the rear climate control. Aiding an extra long-term comfort as well is that you can recline the rear seat. So just grab the grip handle over here. You can also use that to fold and you can also tumble these seats like I showed you a second ago. And I'll show you how it affects the cargo space in just a little bit. But just grab the grip handle and go ahead and lean back. And it goes back a few inches. It's, it's pretty substantial. So especially if you have this armrest sitting out here, it's a nice, nice way to kick back and relax. And of course the rake of recline is also adjustable so you don't it's not like all or none there's like a middle position so it's a little more flexible so let's go and hop on in the back seat and show you the amenities for third row passengers so getting into the back seat is pretty easy there's no power fold and tumble option for the durango but it, these seats are pretty lightweight to do it this bottom cushion, look down in the bottom, you'll see a grab handle, the same handle that you would use to recline it. Grab it and go forward. The headrest automatically tumbles. Then you just grab this red strap, flip it forward, and climb on in using the little um, all-weather uh, protector piece down there. Let's go ahead and hop on in. Not too hard. The first thing that you will notice, though, is how much rear seat room there is back here. I, uh, all day long, I'll say this is a lot more comfortable than the third row in the Tahoe. It sits up a little higher and these seats have so much more padding and definition to them. They're, they're far more comfortable than you would expect just a third row seat to be. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm 5'10", and I probably have a good inch and a half, two inches of headroom. And where you would think you'd be a little bit cramped as far as leg is concerned, there's actually not the case. I mean. Despite these being captain's chairs with the seat up in its normal position, I probably have about an inch and a half of leg space. So there's a lot of wiggle room back here, especially with the absence of the middle portion of the seat right here. I like it a lot. I mean, the detailing back here is phenomenal. The only thing different between these seats and the other seats is that you don't have the RT logo stitched in the backrest, which you still have the perforations, you have the red accent stitching. It's, it's awesome. There's a cup holder on either side, um, that's really about it. Of course, tinted glass in the factory, the air vents up top, reading lamps, illumination. And like I said, these headrests also fold down by a button up in the front of the vehicle for added visibility. Which, speaking of visibility, the, it's excellent all the way around. I mean, the, very, the rear pillar or the D pillar is very small. I mean, there's a lot of glass back here all the way around. Despite being back here, you don't feel claustrophobic whatsoever, and when you're maneuvering on the road, even though it's a larger vehicle, it's very easy to see out of. Awesome. It's also very easy to, to climb out. I mean, just like folding it earlier, you grab the little red strap back here, you go ahead and bring it down, and you grab it once more, and flip it forward. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. A power operating lift gate comes standard, which is able to be fully controlled via the key fob. It opens up into 17.2 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row, which is 2 cubic feet more than the 2015 Chevrolet Tahoe. 
The third row can easily be folded down via two levers built into the seat backing. Once folded, it expands to a significant 47.7 cubic feet behind the second row. With all of the seats folded down, you get a substantial 84.5 cubic feet of usable space. On the other hand, a Tahoe can expand to 51.5 and 94.2 cubic feet respectively, so it is a little bit bigger overall. Even though the Tahoe has greater overall capacity, I still prefer the layout of the Durango more. On the left hand side, you have an integrated LED flashlight built into the side panel in addition to a small storage cubby. With the Tahoe in 2015, I wasn't really a big fan of how they raised the floorboard. It compromised cargo space a bit, but they did it to allow for fold flat seating. As you can see, the Durango has fold flat seating just the way it's designed but you still have a massive cargo well beneath for stowing of larger items. There's also four cargo tie downs in the back if you need to secure things a little bit better. The passenger seat features the same power adjustments that you find on the driver's seat. You do have a lockable glove box down below, has a good amount of space, also lined in felt with illumination. The Dodge Durango RT offers a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to performance, features, comfort, and practicality. It's a great no-compromise vehicle for auto enthusiasts that's fun to drive and has the looks of a muscle car. If you're looking for a roomy three-row SUV, be sure to add the Durango to your list of things to consider. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2015 Dodge Durango RT. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.